Uh, I hope that uh, you guys do know that we're open. Mountain High is open, and we're having church, and we are blessed and highly favored to the Lord. Amen? Uh, we want you to know that uh, uh, everybody's welcome here, whether you wear a mask or not. We're not here to judge whether you wear a mask or not. We're here to tell you that you live in a free land still, and you can do it any way you want to. Amen? And we don't tell you what to do here. You do, you do it your way. But we are open. We are safe. We believe that we had a Holy Spirit inoculation against COVID. Amen? And uh, our God is our protector. And we can show you all those verses if you want us to. And uh, there's a lot of verses that says our God protects us. Amen? And we are blessed and we are protected. And we're believing together that we're all going to be healthy. And uh, amen? And I mean, our best protection is God. Our best protection. We have other things, but I tell you what, God is our protector. And we believe that today and we, uh, we go with that. Amen. And we bless all of you guys and we're just grateful for those of you that are here this morning. Uh, welcome to Mountain High. And um, we're just going to get started here. We're going to uh, we'll go ahead and um, receive our offering. We do that on Facebook. We just let you know on Facebook how we give because our, our attendance has been down. So uh, we're letting people give on Facebook Live or, or letting them. We're, we're, we're giving them an opportunity to give on Facebook Live. And uh, yeah, it's real easy. You just go to our website, godshappy.com. It's very easy, godshappy.com. Click on Tithely and you can give there. It's very simple. Very simple, and uh, we're just, uh, it's really easy to do. You can also give by mail. Uh, you can give to Mountain High Chapel, MHC, at uh, P.O. Box 123, Conifer, Colorado, 80433. It's so easy, amen? Amen, it's easy to do. And we just, you know what? We believe in giving here. You know, our, our, our largest uh, bill, I say this all the time, but there's people that are new and you haven't heard this, but there are, our largest bill for Mountain High is our missionaries. And we take care of a lot of people out in, uh, in the world. Amen. Number one, we have an orphanage in Kenya that uh, this church built. Amen. When Mona met Vincent, he had a little house and he had 25 kids in it. Now he's got 76 kids and a complex. Amen. We've got, we built some buildings. We've got, we, you, you've been there, haven't you, hon? And uh, we just, uh, Sam, you've been there. A lot of you guys have been there with us. And what, what, what a blessing it is to just be able to, to, to feed those kids every week. Amen. That's what we're doing. We're feeding the kids. I mean, that's what we believe in. Pure religion, undefiled, is ministering to the orphans and the widows. Amen. And so what a blessing that is, those kids. And they're all in school. We have uh, four or five of them in college. We have one of them graduated college. That's a miracle for an orphan to do. And uh, these kids are amazing. And uh, they're doing things that are powerful in the spirit. They're doing things that are, are, are working. Amen. And uh, what a blessing that is. And then we have our, our great friend, Tony Rivera, uh, down in uh, uh, Cardampata, Peru. Uh, he's got an orphanage there. And... Uh, and a um, old folks home. And uh, it's so neat. And we built a, helped him build a church there. Uh, Sam uh, built the trusses for that out of green wood. It was awesome. When you drive a nail in that wood, it would splash you in the face. And, and every, uh, they were all rough cut. What were they, rough cut two by eights or two by tens or something? Two by twelves, rough cut two by twelves. And uh, it was just hilarious. And then they weren't long enough, so Sam prayed and he got a board stretcher. And uh, we made them longer, didn't we, Sam? And uh, Sam doesn't like doing things like that, but he made it. He made that those those roof trusses, and uh, we just uh, we got a church going there right now. The church is on the move. Tony's not back there yet, but but he'll be back there soon. Amen. <laughs> and uh, you know we got to. Wait for the stuff to lift to get him back in the country. But uh, he runs it. He, he said, Rosa told me the other day that he only, he only calls them four or five times a day. <laughs> so, uh, but that's going. They're rescuing kids and old folks. Amen. And uh, so many things. The Hardens, the people we just went to uh, Washington, D.C. with. Uh, 
Kevin and Karen Harden. They're awesome people. Uh, they've had a, a ministry called China Call for years. They've rescued uh, kids and taken Bibles and started churches and everything into China. We have uh, uh, supported their ministry for many, many years, and now she's doing a lot of writing, and she's writing for Intercessors for America in their publications, and she's the one that got us connected that we went to um, uh, Washington with and met these awesome people. We met congressmen, and uh, it was just amazing what, what, what happened there. But we're, we're, we're supporting their ministry. They're still do, doing work in China. We, we, got, we have so many things that we're doing. But we want you guys to know something. We're reaching people. Also, we're reaching people right here. Amen? Uh, uh, just because of our new friend Cheryl uh, has got us connected with, uh, she's got us connected with the food deal that President Trump has done. Uh, he has bought food from the farmers that were going to go to the dump. His food was going to go to the dump if he didn't buy it. And so he bought it and distributing it across the nation in semis and giving it to people for free. We've had two different loads of that so far. Looks like we may get another one next week, but we feed people here in our community too. Somebody asked me one day, somebody got upset with me, why do you support all those people in third world nations and all that and you don't support our people here? I said, hold on. We do support our people here. I want you to know, if you know anybody that's hungry, we will feed them. I don't care who they are or what they've done. We, had a, a, we fed a known felon. Hello? I don't want anybody to starve. I can say that because he was my grandson. Yeah, he escaped. He escaped a deal and, and he was starving to death on the streets of Denver. And he called us. He said, I need food. I don't know what to do. So we took him a sack of food. What am I going to do? Let my grandson starve? You know, it was during COVID. They, do, they, weren't, they, they opened the jail up. They, you know, they weren't going to arrest him. And uh, he, you know, stuff like that. But we feed people, amen? We're about feeding people. We love people. That's what we're here for. That's what the ministry is all about, amen? And so that's what we're doing today. So when you know, when you plant your offering, you're going to help people. You're going to feed people, bless people, love people, care for people, minister to people. We do all kinds of different counseling. We do marriage counseling, family counseling. We do all kinds of different things. And amen, we're here about you, amen. So we're here to just love God and love people, and that's what we do. So we're going to pray over. How many missionaries? I don't know, Sam. Some, sometimes there's 19, sometimes there's 22, sometimes there's 12. I don't know. We, 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 we support a lot of ministries, but they're not all full-time. But there's probably about 19 of them that are. So we, we, we support a lot, of, a lot of different ones. So that's what we do. So if you, can, if you want to plan into good ground, we have some. Amen? So Father, we just pray over these offerings today, the ones coming in from uh, the internet. The ones coming in from right here at Mountain High. We're thankful for these people, Father God. And we're thankful, Father, that you bless us beyond measure. That you've given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. That we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. And we know today, Father God, that no matter what the situation, you get us through. And Father, we're just thankful, Father God, not just to get through, but to prosper and be in health, even as our souls prosper in every realm. And so we're just grateful for everybody here today. Father God, we bless everybody's uh, financial realm, and we thank you, Father God, as we put seed in the ground that you bring us a mighty harvest, and we're grateful for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yeah, Sam's got cash-giving envelopes if you want to give cash. Uh, you got some hands going up there for cash uh, right there in the back, and all kinds of stuff going on here. We're just uh, letting you guys know, we just got back from Washington, D.C. We went to the, uh, to the prayer rally there. We went to the walk. Uh, uh, we were there with all the people and there was thousands upon thousands. I don't know, I can't count that many people. I don't know how to do it. But I know there was a bunch of them and I said this before we started on Facebook, but I want you people to know out there on Facebook Live that I go to, uh, I've gone to Broncos games before at Mile High Stadium. Mile High Stadium holds right about 70,000 is what I believe. And uh, I've seen it full, been there. And um, 
So I took that view of those 70,000 people that were at Mile High Stadium when I was there, and I stood on the little side hill there on the mall right by, uh, by the uh, Lincoln Memorial and, and looked out, and I just took segments, and I said, well, that's about Mile High Stadium. That's about Mile High Stadium. That's about Mile High Stadium. I counted 20 of them. And we heard some, somebody said, some poor uh, sap of an individual said there might have been 50,000 there. Well, <laughs> let me tell you what, honey, I, uh, I can count better than that. And you, you can see more than that on, the, on TV. And uh, it was on TBN, which was great, and I'm thankful for that. And uh, so they, they're showing a real thing, but I don't know the real count. But in my mind, it had to have been a million. In my mind, it had to be. And so that's just me. Uh, that's not an exact count. I couldn't go punch their cards, each one, but uh, it was an incredible thing. Right now, we're going to do a, a, a little slideshow of some of the pictures, and then I'll talk a little bit about what we saw there and how we saw the power of God move in Washington, D.C. And so we'll put that, uh, we'll put that little uh, show up there, and I think Josh is shutting off the lights. Yay, look at there. They go down. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just watch this little show and, and enjoy it.
it's really true, I'll never be the same. I went there, I went there to Washington thinking that the only hope that we had for our government was to have the, the, the outpouring, which is happening, amen. The awakening has started, it's begun, the alarm went off. The alarm went off and I hope you heard it because you have something to do here, you. Every single one of us has something to do. But I went there thinking that the government was so corrupt that there was really no hope for them short of a revival. That's what I thought. I thought that for a long time. Uh, you know, I've seen the corruption in the government. We know it's there. Anybody that doesn't know there's corruption in the government is, can't read. Or, or they've never watched the news, hello? Or you never watched the, the corrupt debate that we just watched. Can I say that on Facebook Live? I just did, it was corrupt. Two against one, it's not right. So anyway, <laughs> but I went there and I saw people that were just like us. We met, you saw his, his face there, he was smiling, he had a suit jacket on, we had him and his uh, blonde wife were there. That is Senator uh, Mike Bost from Illinois. Him and his wife went with us on the prayer tour. Uh, he couldn't go to everything because they were working. He had to work some and he'd come in and out and go with us, but his wife spent the whole time with us. And that man, I talked to him and I asked him about the deep state. I asked him about the corruption. I asked him about the control of the Illuminati. Can you say that on Facebook? I, I, I asked him about all of those things. And I mean, I spent time with him, a lot of time. I mean, I, I, I would venture to say that I could, you know, talk to him for at least an hour. Not all at once, just in segments. And just, he'd just take time with any of us just to talk to us. And he said, you know what? He said, I've heard of all that stuff. That's what he said. He says, I've heard of all that stuff. And he says, I'm sure it's out there, but he says, it's not me. It's not some of my colleagues. Some of my colleagues believe in Jesus just like you. And we believe there's hope for America. And we believe we're gonna overcome this thing. And we're praying with you. And we thank you for praying with us. And we got to pray over him, with him, for him, for him and his wife. They're doing an incredible, incredible thing there by standing for Jesus Christ in the Congress. They're real, They're, this is real people. Then we couldn't even believe this. It was just amazing. We, uh, we were invited by another lady, you saw a picture of her on there, but this other lady who our tour guide just met, she didn't know her very long, but invited us to the Capitol Hill restaurant where only senators and Congress people and people high in government places can go eat. And it's, it's Republican. That's what it is, it's, it says that. And, and, uh, and they let us, they, they let us in uh, there to eat lunch and dinner three times. With the senators, with the congress, congressmen, in the same room with them the hobnobbing with them saying, hey, how you doing? One of them said to me, and I forgot his name, but one of them said to me, he said, uh, he said, what are you guys doing here? Because we had some powerful speakers there and they would just pray in the spirit. I mean, they'd just pray right there in the place. We didn't care. I mean, everybody just prayed. And uh, I said, well, we're here to pray for Washington, D.C. We're here to pray for you. He goes, thank you, we need it. <laughs> Amen. And, and just to listen to the hope in these people. There's hope, guys and gals. There's hope. There's good people in Washington, D.C. Then you saw us all praying around on the, uh, on the Capitol steps there. You saw us all praying. There was a lady in a purple shirt, and she was in the middle of us. She's a congresswoman, and I, I, I don't have Mona here to, to give names. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, she was a congresswoman, a uh, powerful lady, powerful lady, brought us right there on the steps, right behind Nancy Pelosi's office uh, 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 
of the deal, and we all prayed, and she spoke to us. We prayed for her. She's praying for our nation. She's in there telling people about the Lord, telling people uh, uh, what we have to do to get through this mess, where we have to go to, 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 to make it. And then, uh, to my total surprise, I had no idea this was going to happen. Does anybody who know who Lance Wallnow is? Uh, well, I met Lance Wallnow in uh, 2015 at uh, uh, Billy, uh, Billy Epperhart's meeting in Denver. And that's when he prophesied that President Trump would win the 2016 election. And uh, Lance Wallnow came to our lunch, Yay! ate lunch with us and spoke to us for an hour. We talked to him, you know, he was just, I mean, just amazing. But here's a message for you from Lance Wall now. If we don't all do something, we're going to lose our country. And that has to happen by November 3rd. We have to win. We, the, uh, President Trump has to win this election or you lose the country. That's what, ha that, that's what all of them are saying. The Congress people are saying this. Everybody knows. Let me tell you what, though. The power of God is stronger than, than the Luciferian spirit. That's right. And we saw that, that march, those people walking in unison. Whether It didn't matter what your doctrine was. There wasn't church people there fighting about whether you speak in tongues or not. That's ridiculous to me. It's just totally ridiculous to me. It's wrong. It's messed up. We can't fight anymore. We have to come together now. And I saw this picture, and this, this, this just, I mean, this was live, but it was a picture of what's happening. I saw this young girl. I thought she was 12. Mona thinks she's 18. I don't know. They're all little girls to me. I still think, I was there when Cheyenne was born. She's sitting right back there. How old are you now? She's 22, and I still think she's four. <laughs> so you're just going to have to help me with that. But this young girl, okay, a young girl between 12 and 18 somewhere, she was walking on the mall, and somehow one of the sprinkler heads had been leaking and leaking and leaking. And she didn't notice it, and she stepped down, and she, her leg went down in the mud clear to her knee and then um, we were like I don't know from here to the flagpole to her so I couldn't go run after her but you should have seen the people that did I mean it was beautiful they went to her they grabbed onto her she's saying help me help me and this guy says, we're going to get you out of this. And, and, and her leg wouldn't come out. I mean, it was like quicksand or something. It was like suctioned in there, you know? You ever been in mud like that? It's just nasty. And, and, and finally, this, this one guy said, honey, I'm just going to have to give you a big hug, okay? And he grabbed her like this and pulled her up out of there. And I watched that happen. And that was like, that's what, that was our country. Jesus grabbed it, pulled us up. Amen? There's hope. But you have to do something. You have to go to every, here, here, here's a mandate for you. I'm asking for your help here. You can do this. This is not hard. You have to go to every polling station, every one of those boxes where you drop off your, your, your ballot, every one of those and pray over it. Is that hard? Can you handle that? Come on, Mona has a list of them. Guess what? You get a list. I don't know if you got all those papers. Did, you haven't got all those papers. Why don't you bring those papers in and we'll have Sam um, uh, send them around because I want you to have all those papers. Yes, and uh, th there's stuff in there. I mean, you've got stuff in there that's giving you stuff to pray. Amen. And uh, we can do something. You can do something. Amen. You know what you can do when you go to the post office, pray over that thing. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let me tell you, the power of God is better, more huge, awesome.
than any demonic spirit. We're going to break this thing. We're going to have an honest election and it's going to happen. And we're not, we're not saying this because we're trying to be political. To heck with political. We're against communism. We're against communism. Anybody in here against communism? I am against communism. We're not going to be communists. I will not be a communist. Amen? And we're not going to lose our country. So Jesus is Lord. And there's hope. When you have that many Christians across denominational lines that didn't give a rip, not one person at that, at that rally, when all those people spoke, and some of you got to watch it on TV, when all those people spoke, not one person was booing them or saying, well, I don't agree with that. You know what? There's all kinds of stuff that you don't agree with. Get over yourself. Today. Today's, the Bible says today's the day of salvation. Listen, a house divided will not stand. First of all, you can't be divided in your family. You've got to get over it. Second of all, you can't be divided in your church. I don't like what Corny said. She said something, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we've got to break the spirit of yeah, yeah, yeah. In Jesus' name. And get over ourselves, amen? We can't worry about it when they don't believe just like us. It's okay, don't worry about it. They believe in Jesus, that's good, hallelujah. Let me tell you what, all those people there believed in Jesus. Amen, I, I'm not Jewish. I'm not, I'm not a Jewish person. I, I don't blow shofars. We had a lady on our trip that was blowing the shofar. Now when Jonathan Kahn blows the shofar, I like hearing that. But when some people blow the shofar, it's kind of like a sick bull elk, you know? <laughs> Well, when Jonathan Kahn blew the shofar, it was real. And I'm telling you what, something happened in the spirit. I heard it. It's real. And it was God. I don't give a rip if you like his doctrine or not. I don't care about his doctrine. I care that he loves Jesus. He loves the Lord. It doesn't matter about all the stuff. It doesn't matter what you think is the doctrine of the day. It doesn't matter about any of that. Lay it down. Let's get together, all of us. That's what he was trying to do. He did a dang good job of it too. I didn't see anybody else doing it. He did it. Come on. So did Franklin Graham. You got to give him some credit here too. Franklin Graham gave everybody that was there a mask. For pity's sake. He did. He gave them all a mask. And, and, and he gave us a little thing, you know, a little, what do you call it, the lanyard that you wear, and a little thing about the prayer day and everything. He did all that. He did that out of the goodness of his heart because he wants us to be unified because, because he knows that a house divided won't stand. Jonathan Kahn knows that a house divided won't stand. Michelle Bachman knows that a house divided won't stand. And we have got to bring this thing together. And it's us. 25 million, I'm quoting Andrew Walmack here. I heard him say this with my own ears. 25 million registered Christians did not vote in the 2016 election. And people are yelling at me and tearing our signs down out here and everything else because we want people to vote. No, you need to vote. You need, you need to vote for your morals and your freedom. Amen. Yes. You, you know what? I hope, I hope we are beyond the point where we think it's just hunky-dory la-la land and that, that President Trump isn't real likable. What do you think this is about? You, th you think some likable, uh, uh, fluffy, foo-foo dude could take what he's taking? Are you kidding me? You know what Michelle Bachman said? I'm quoting Michelle Bachman here, and she doesn't mind. She said, he's a street fighter. Right, that's right. Right, that's right. And you need a street fighter on, on, in our corner to get through this thing. He's a street fighter. He's not foo-foo. He's not going to say it the way you do. He, he, he says things, and I just go, what? I mean, I don't get it. I don't have to get it. He's our president. Amen? 
And he's our president, and we need to stand behind him. He needs to get reelected, or we lose our country. I don't think people get that. I think it's like, well, Biden, you know, he's kind of nice. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What are we doing here? We have to win our country back now, and you have to do something about it. I have to do something about it. Each one of us, you've got to do your part. You've got to tell somebody. You've got to help somebody. You've got to help somebody vote. You've got to tell somebody that it's not about personality. You know what? We've had Hollywood too long. You know, isn't, you know, because our president isn't whooshy and cushy and goo goo and gaga, that he's a street fighter. I don't know if you've ever been on the street. I have. I wasn't a street bum, but I fought there. I got knocked out there many times. <laughs> Amen. It's, a, it's not good to be a street fighter. It isn't. It's not a good thing. It's not a fun thing. It's not what Jesus is about. But I'll tell you what, God raised up a, a street fighter president for such a time as this because he's not going to take their lies. Amen. A lot of those. Huh? Yes, sir, buddy. He could be sitting on a yacht somewhere, you know. And uh, by the way, that bacon that you saw the picture of, that was at the Trump Hotel. <laughs> and that was our appetizer for lunch. It's a quarter of an inch thick, cooked with a torch. They hang it on a little clothesline and go, it was awesome. We just had to go there. Our last day, we had time before the flight left, and we said, let's go to the Trump Hotel. And well, we thought we couldn't get in, but uh, we did. We walked right in. It was awesome. It was so much fun. Guys, there's hope for our nation. Now, I want to get down to the word uh, here because this is the word of the whole walk. And everybody heard about this word, and it was a, a powerful word, and it was an in due season word, and it wasn't from the New Testament. And I know we are New Testament, New Covenant people. Amen. Uh, we are not under the law, but we're under grace. Thank you. Amen. Don't, isn't that good to know? Isn't it good to know that you couldn't keep the law anyway? Jesus became the law because you couldn't keep it. I couldn't keep it. So he did it for us. Every commandment that Jesus has spoken, Jesus has spoken some commandments. Have you noticed? Have you read it? Every one of those commandments his grace does it for you. Look out. But you have to make the decision. You get to make the decision. Now, the power of God works it out through you, but you make the decision to go with his grace or not. Amen? As we were looking at all this stuff and just, I don't know, my mind's kind of on tilt. You ever get like that? Uh, I mean, I'm just like, Whoa. there's just so many things. But as we were there and we heard Jonathan Kahn say, Second Chronicles 7, 14, and I'm reading this one out of the ESV. It says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, I understand that's an old covenant scripture that Jesus, uh, you know, you don't twist God's arm. You know, if you do something, God's not gonna do something. It doesn't work like that. I wanna tell you something that might make you go tilt is everything that needs to be done is already done. It's already done. Every miracle is already done. Jesus Christ has already done it all for you. All you have to do is connect to it. So it's not about if. What if we took if off of that scripture? If, well, no. What if it just said, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and I will... Uh, Forgive their sin and heal their land, how, how, however, however it all goes. First off, you've got to know your sin's already forgiven. That's what the cross was about. 
at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light. Amen? At the cross. It's done. It's paid for. Sin's paid for. See, that's the problem with religion is religion says we got to keep paying. You know, it's like going to Walmart. You ever go to Walmart? God, yeah, I, I try to sit in the car when Mona goes to Walmart. But, but uh, <laughs> I don't like Walmart. But, but Mona does, and she goes there. And every time, the bill is $343. You ever done that? <laughs> yeah. And so, but Mona, but Mona is so kind. Anybody knows Mona? She's very intense. Some people think that she's not nice or something, but she's nice and she's kind. Uh, she's intense. She's on a mission. That's what Mona is. She's on a mission all the time. She never gets off of it. 11 o'clock last night, she's on a mission. I said, I'm going to bed. <laughs> she's on a mission. She's doing something all the time. But what she does, she pays the bill right at Walmart, $343.28. Boom, she pays the bill. She comes out to the car and she goes, honey, you know what? I just... That lady was so nice to me, and they were so nice to me in Walmart, and we had, I got some really good deals. I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to pay the bill again. Right? What, wouldn't that be a good idea? No. Right, don't, don't you do that, Linda? Don't you do that? Come on, Cliff. Does Linda do that? You don't know? Okay. He doesn't go to Walmart, period. No, but... but uh, but that doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, that's you trying to pay for your sin. You know why? Because Jesus already paid for it. So we don't, we're not worried here about humbling ourselves and, and, and repenting 8,000 times. No, this country needs to repent of murder. That's what they're talking about. They're not talking about your sin that, that Jesus paid for. Jonathan Collins is not even talking about that. He's talking about this country repenting for murder and killing all the babies. That needs to happen. That's what he's talking about. So we got to get over this stuff and just go with it, man. Go with it. I'm telling you what, he's telling us something. That, that guy, he wants us to come together. He wants us to come together in unity and in peace. I'll tell you what, guys. We saw a peace that passes all understanding with thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. Never a push, never a shove, never a foul word, never a get out of my way, never a I want this first, people letting other people go. Oh no, you get on there, you go ahead, you get on that bus, go on, come on. Everybody just helping people, then they help the little girl out of the mud. Come on now, come on. Are we here? 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Amen? Amen? All scripture. That means 2 Chronicles 7.14. Are, are you with me? Yes. Come on, grace people. Yes. 2 Chronicles 7.14 is one of those scriptures that we got to say, hey, let's listen to this. Listen, if it's that rampant, that is the scripture of scriptures right now in our nation. Yes. If it's that rampant, you might want to pay attention. You might want to get in that scripture and meditate yourself. That's something you can do. Show me what this means, Lord. Here's a prayer for you. Show me what this means for our country. Meditate on that scripture. Pray it out loud 15 times. See what God says to you. Come on, you have something to do. Most all of us here realize that we do not have to twist God's arm or beg him to do something to get him to answer our prayers. We don't have to do that. God's in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. I walk with him, I talk with him all the time. When we read the scriptures, we must put on our gospel goggles you got some? I was going to ask Josh to give me a, a pair of ski goggles or something. And I, I have some snowmobile ones, but I didn't want to get in that closet. But, uh, <laughs> but we got to put on our gospel goggles. Amen? Yeah, here, here, we'll use these today. These are my gospel glasses, okay? We put these on. When you read the scripture, it doesn't matter what scripture you read. You got to read it. 
with your gospel goggles on. We read the scripture, we must put those goggles on. What I mean is we must look at every scripture through the view of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Do you know what that is? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen, that is the gospel. That is the gospel. There's no better news than the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gospel, amen? So, let's put our gospel glasses on and read through this real quick. Uh, Somebody turn back that clock a little. (laughs) If my people, are we his people? Come on now. Come on. Come on. Who are called by my name. That's us too. This is, a, this is called a Christian nation. Come on. Humble themselves. You think that would be New Testament? You think it would be New Testament to humble yourself? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Come on, man. Yes. Not just you, all of us. We need to humble ourselves. Amen? You agree with that? Huh? Well, the only way you can do it is through grace. You can't humble yourself. You humble yourself through grace. You choose to humble yourself, and the grace of God does it through you. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful how he does it through us? Christ in us, the hope of glory. Do we believe it, or do we just think that's a cool-sounding scripture? Wow. Wow. Pray? You think that might be New Testament? I'll tell you what, when I saw all those people praying, we just stood there. Grown men, just tears flowing down our face. When our whole, it felt like our whole nation was praying and believing God to deliver us from communism. To deliver us from the from the lie of the Luciferian spirit to deliver us from the Antichrist spirit, to break that Antichrist spirit. Let me tell you what, those people tried to, to, to come around us, it, it, it wouldn't happen. We were at the, we were at the um, um, Supreme Court and they were doing a thing, this, our tour guide knew this lady that was having a... Um, a silent prayer. They do it every day for 55 days. They put a piece of tape, red tape on your lips and it says life. They just go there and pray silent. They don't make a big deal. They don't yell at people. They don't holler and they don't wave signs. They just go there and they face it and they, and they pray. You saw us there. We were there. One of those pictures showed that. And then this other group of people came up that were protesting uh, um, all kinds of stuff. What, what was their main focus, Jerry? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't want the new Supreme Court justice. That, that, they were fighting about her. And they were hollering and yelling. And they had fake doctors up there telling you, you know, all this stuff. And it, was, it was just bogus. And uh, we were just there praying. And no, nobody had a conflict with them. And then there comes this man of God. This man of God. He was awesome. This big black man. And he's always around Washington, D.C. It's his ministry to go around. He says, Jesus saves and he's got a sign that says that. He says, Jesus saves. Only that is tiny, nothing sound compared to him. <laughs> Jesus saves. And he's big, man. I'm not kidding. He's big as David Hinton. He's big. And he, says, and he goes right in the middle of them. He says, Jesus saves. And this lady pushed him. This little, this little lady goes up and pushes on him like he didn't budge. I mean, he didn't even phase him. <laughs> He says, Jesus saves. He says, ma'am, don't touch me. (laughs) And we just prayed. And and he walked around and uh, they yelled at him and cursed him and said all kinds of stuff to him. And he would just say it. Jesus saves. And then he would quote scripture, wouldn't he, Jerry? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus saves. 
And Mona and I and some of the other people walked up the steps to go up and pray over the, the doors up at the Supreme Court. And, uh, and uh, we turned around and those people were gone. The power of Jesus. We never said a word. That man did his ministry. That's what he's called to do. He's a street preacher. He's amazing. And come on, guys. What's your job? He's doing his job. He did it. He did his job. And they, they said something. Well, we're not like those people over here trying to get this justice in here. We want rights for our women. He said, ma'am, those people, leave those people alone. They just want Jesus and his ways. And it just so calm, so kind. Come on, what are we? What are we? Come on. So I'm going to get down through this. We're going to go over a little bit today on Facebook Live. So forgive us. Where did I say pray? Is that a good idea? That's a good idea. How about seeking God's face? I kind of like that one too. Amen. And how about uh, turning from their wicked ways? Uh, might be a great idea from our, for our country. You think? Then we will hear from heaven and, and we'll forgive their sin and heal their land. Now we know our sins are forgiven. Come on. We already talked about that. We also know that our land, our nation, our country will be healed. But we also know there's a whole bunch of corruption that needs to be dealt with and the Luciferian spirit needs to be cast down. And that's what's happening in America. You've got to take those prayers that Mona gave you. Pray them every day over this country. You can do something. You count. You know, Congressman Bost, uh, Bost, he told me, he says, it matters what you guys do. It, it, every prayer matters. He said, we can feel it. Michelle Bachman's got thousands of people going on this prayer. The, the Intercessors for America. You know what? Intercessors, they're a different group, man. They're a different people group. You know what I'm talking about? When I saw these intercessors, though, I saw women and men of God that were sold out to Jesus Christ and to do their part, what they believe their call is for this nation. And let me tell you what, get behind them, go with it. Don't worry about the doctrine. You know, I know God, did, God gave some, or Jesus gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and intercessors. You know, I, I know, I know. And they get a bad rap because you don't really see that there. But let me tell you what, these people that we met are prayer warriors and they are praying for this country because they want this country to be free. Come on. Are you with me? Come on, the people that are using uh, this verse all the time, all they want is the land to be healed. That's all they want. We saw that in D.C. I saw thousands and thousands and thousands of people come together with no doctrinal differences at the mall. It was peaceful. It was blessed. It was full of unity. Come on now. That's us. That's who we are. Do we stand for freedom? Heck yeah. Is there a time to fight? Heck yeah. But right now, our battle is at the pole. Right now. We got to pray over this pole. We got to pray that corruption's broken down and they can't get us. They can't get us at that pole. We got to pray that our, every vote is counted perfectly and that our president wins a second term the way it should be in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I'm praying that, guys and gals. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not afraid to say it with the people that uh, uh, we just met with in Washington, D.C. They're standing for America. And we stand for America today. Amen? All of us. And now what I'd like to do right now as we end this on Facebook Live, hey, um, can you put that uh, flag up there on the, on the uh, screen, please? You know the big flag? Is that easy to do? The one that comes, oh, the one that's on there. <laughs> I thought it showed the same back there as it shows up there, but it doesn't. That's okay. So I want everybody to stand right now. That's the flag. Sorry, I just didn't get that. And let's, let's say the Pledge of Allegiance, amen?
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen and amen. And Father, we pray right now over this country in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth who came in the flesh by the power of the blood, the cross, and the, and the resurrection, we cast down the Luciferian spirit, the Antichrist spirit that's been over our nation. We cast it down now and we command it gone now. And we speak boldly that our country America will stay free. We will be a free nation. We will not bow down to the liars. We will not bow down to the Luciferian spirit or the Antichrist spirit because they are broken in the name of Jesus. We speak life over our country. We speak life over our nation. We repent, Lord, as a nation for, for, for abortion. We repent for that. We, we didn't do it, Lord, I know. And then so many people are not guilty of that. But we repent for our nation. Amen. We're part of this nation. We repent for our nation. Yes, right. And Lord, we lay it at your feet. And we say, God, help us. Yes. And Father, we just thank you that Jesus made a way where there was no way. We thank you that Jesus has forgiven those ladies that had the abortions. We thank you for that forgiveness today, and we believe that. And Lord, I believe today that our nation will turn, and I believe today that our nation will rise up for the greatest awakening, the greatest outpouring, the greatest revival ever. Lord, we speak it, we believe it, and we thank you for it. I pray over every person here, every person watching in Jesus' name that each and every one of us, Father God, would do our part because you have anointed us for such a time as this. We pray that today in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Now, one more time before you shut it off. You still got it on? Everybody, you got to know that you know that you know that Jesus is Lord. And there's one way to do it. It's to believe in your heart and to confess with your mouth that Jesus died on the cross and God raised him from the dead. Come on. Amen? Amen. So you believe that today with us? Let's just say the prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross and that God raised you from the dead. I trust you. I know you're real. I know you're with us. And I know today that I'm saved because of you. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.